learn about some of the things, you know, like learn how to budget money. I know that at some stage they do that, yeah. but actually what's, what's going to serve me well later on, like learning this or being tested for something that, you know, I'm not that great at, or I don't know, it's just, it's in, yeah. what, what's, what's... No, I think the, the money management is a massive thing because yeah. you leave school and you're done, you might know the capital of, yeah. I don't know, Belgium, yeah. or you might know how to work a compass. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how to save the money to travel there though? Exactly. <laughs> Do you know how to buy a house? Like literally, going through the mortgage process, yeah. you're thinking, mate, you could have taught me this in my GCSE. Yeah. There could have been a GCSE about yeah. finance, you know, yeah. not, not just maths, but so, actually yeah. ISAs, contracts, yeah. mortgages, loans, you know, money management on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think, so, and I, I'm really conscious of this as well, like what, what you were saying about not knowing what to do mm. at, that, at that stage. And I didn't know what I wanted to do, literally probably up until like seven years ago, to be honest. And what I hope for, for me to be able to do for my daughter is be able to uh, guide. So not say do this or do that at all, but be able to look at her strengths, look at her passions, look at what she's good at naturally, and be able to say, oh, you might be able to do something like this or do something like that. I think mm. so much of us were left to kind of literally our, our own devices and then go into university. I went to university, like, I didn't know really what I wanted to study. I went to uni because I didn't want to go get a job. That's, mm. that's the honest truth. And I had a great two years, realised I was failing in the third year. I basically just didn't go out and, yeah. and just yeah. saved it in the third year. But I kind of feel like, actually, if, if it was either from parenting or, or from school or, or someone before could have said, oh, actually, like, you're good at this or, or mm. this is the sort of job that what the real life world looks like and then kind of encouraged into that and maybe held off uni for a couple of years and, and I think that, that is missing so much mm. in terms of we're just kind of through this elevator of education and they come out at the other end and you don't know yeah. you're starting from scratch. It can be a grade factory do you know what I mean and I think sometimes it's, it's kind of GCSEs so that you can do your A-levels and then get your A-levels so that you can then apply to a great university whether it's a Russell group or whatever yeah. and then I get you know and it just it can it can be a little bit of a like like I'm, I, I remember bumping into a, a student I taught well I think I briefly taught him uh, several years back and um, I ended up working at a, a place I was doing some supply teaching he was there um, and he was a teacher there and I thought desperately old but then <laughs> we had a conversation and it was just really alarming how he'd gotten to this stage in his life young adult He's went to university and you know did 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 the whole journey and that, there's nothing wrong with that. I did that same journey and I'm grateful for it and it's done wonderful things for me. But he was desperately unhappy mm. because he just felt like he just did what everyone else was doing and was, it was kind of told this is the way you do it. Mm. But actually, his dream was to do something far different and he was sat in this job, really unhappy, a little bit unhealthy, and I just thought, gosh, like this is. Like is, if, if that's what he got from life, actually, and I've spoken to other students that have had that same experience and you meet them at 25, 26, 27, and they're just unhappy because they just yeah. did what they thought they should be doing. Yeah. And I wonder if, you know, that again, that pressure is, 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 is kind of streamlining us to just do things a certain way and not allowing variety mm -hmm. and just for us to have all of the options available and then saying, OK, well, now I've looked at all of this, rather than, you know, this, what's your vision? What is your one thing? What's the one thing you're going to do? Actually, I want to do more than one thing. I like doing this and that, and I like doing a bit of that. I like music. I like to create. I like to write. I like to teach. I like... Do you know what I mean? And there's more to us than just this one thing for many people. Mm. Some people love one thing, yeah, but I just feel like, yeah, there's, there's got to be a way where we can look at how we give learners and, edu and people in education opportunities to just explore and then somehow help them to find their way. I'm not saying that needs to be primary school, but well, I mean, it probably has to start. You know, when you think of, especially when you go back to how many years you're going to have where there's going to be some kind of standard testing, we, we probably have to start from early in terms of getting that mindset. And it's something that's kind of a, a, a notion that's been pushed for education in the last kind of few years called growth mindset. Oh, yes. If you've heard about um, it's debatable about how successful it's been but it's the notion of we all have a growth mindset or fixed mindset if you've got a growth mindset it's not a case of i can't do something it's i can't do something yet so eventually i'll be able to i just understand i don't have limitations of boundaries what i want fixed mindset is i can't do it full stop it's done and when you look at that notion again there's it's debatable about how successful that whole notion is 
there is more of a move in education now to say, okay, well, you know, there is more resilience. Most schools will have um, some form of resilience as one of their, um, their, 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 their school, like, you know, ethos. Mm-hmm. Um, but then when you look at, like, wireless society, everything is, seems to be moving in the opposite direction, almost of saying, you know, we have to be moving towards doing this, go and do this, go and do this, go and do this, when it comes to our education. So from the time that you're doing your GCSEs, if you are forward thinking as a student, or if your parents are forward thinking for you, they are thinking if they want you to do medicine, well, you're going to be doing like these sciences mm. because in, you know, in A-levels, you're going to be doing these sciences, then you're going to be going to that medical school and you're going to become a doctor. Like it's non-negotiable. And that's like a sad reality for so many parents and so many children. I think as for us and our generation of parents, I think it is slightly changing. I think it's changing to the point where we are just by virtue of being the next generation more worldly. So we understand there is more than just getting a job. We understand there is something to be said for having hobbies and pastimes and things you enjoy. And it isn't just about, I'm doing a nine to five because a nine to five in that doesn't really exist anymore. Mm-hmm. And then I come home and that's it. And I like to think with, with me as my son gets older, I want to open up to him and say, well, yeah, you know, university is a path for you. But if you express to me there's something else that you enjoy, and university is not that path to, to, to secure that or to pursue that, I will wholeheartedly support him doing something else. If he has a plan and it does not involve university, he has my full support. Whereas for me, it was a case of it was almost a given university. It was, you know, you're, you're going to do your GCSEs and you're going to do well in them, you're going to do A-levels and you're going to go on to university and you're going to get a job. And the job was going to be a white collar job. Mm-hmm. It was going to be a white collar job and it was all about perception. You know, it was about perception. It was about how, how you were seen in terms of the, the success, particularly as, as the son of an immigrant, or immigrants, I should say. You know, it was, you're, you've shown another level. And I remember when I finished university, graduated, and like all of us, you don't necessarily go straight into a job. And I was temping, and I was temping in the week, and I was working in retail in, at the weekend and evenings. And when I was temping, I was working in a white corner environment, but I wasn't really doing much. It was entry level, you know. I remember my mum remarking to me, oh, you know, you look so smart. In her head, she was just like, he's wearing a shirt. I made it. I made it. My <laughs> job is done. That my job is done. Wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she didn't get it. And I remember kind of looking like, at her This is why I came over. Like, yeah, so I came here for this. Like, that shirt is starched, like. <laughs> My job here is done. <laughs> but she didn't understand it, you know? And then when I was going into like retail, you know, she didn't understand that, that, you know, there were still opportunities in that. Like one of my best friends, he works in retail now, in retail management, and he's doing incredibly well. And he found his niche. He found like a passion of people. He found a passion of selling. He found a, a passion for, um, for influencing and and encouraging and championing other people and also found that it was a, a space where he could give other people the push that they maybe didn't necessarily get themselves and he's doing so well for himself and I remember him saying to me like years ago he said you know I know some people think like why am I doing this he's doing so well for himself like he really has like you know got to to that level that so many of our parents want us and wanted us to to achieve mm. and he's gone through the route where he's found a passion and then you look at the other side of it, how many people are they that are doctors right now, dentists, mm. and they hate their job. Mm. They might be getting paid pretty good money. They might be able to say, you know, the, the buzzwords at, at the dinner parties and, you know, what do you do? Like, you know, if, if, if you're like, you know, not in a relationship and you want to be and you tell someone that like, you're a doctor or a dentist, you're like, that's the meal ticket right there, you know? Yeah. And but they hate their jobs, you know? I'm not saying it's for everybody, but they're people mm. that just don't want to do it. And I, I'm, so it's a weird one, I understand, like, you know, our parents, they came from, we were from yeah. West Indies, right? So yeah. they all came from West Indies, 60s, 70s, or whatever. Yeah. And for them, it was like, they were, they're starting foundation building, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. so they didn't have the luxury, I guess, of, of, um, of, of having passions and mm. passion projects and stuff like yeah. that. And I remember, even with MFF, you know, I wrote um, my first independent article, and it went viral, literally, my uncle was ringing the house, like, people, everyone around me had read this article, right? 
apart from my mum and dad. Because they were just like, what is this? <laughs> you got a job, <laughs> you're married, you got a child. What's this all about? Like, wh- why? I just didn't, they didn't get it. Yeah. They didn't get it at all. Now they're starting to understand things more. Um, but in a weird way, at, at the time I was thinking, even Uncle Blah Blah's read this, my godmother, you know, just, yeah. just read the thing. Make but for, for them it was, they've come over here, they're, they're building foundations, um, you know, I had a, a good job, got a good job, family, concentrate on that, build, and don't expose yourself to stuff that could potentially go wrong or, you know, or whatnot. And I feel like, you know, I guess we are blessed that we're in a generation now where we understand that, yeah, the security of having a, a job and a white collar job and all those things are good. Don't get me wrong. I do want my daughter to have security in life. Mm. But at the same time, there's a lot of pressures in the world. And we understand that not only that, but you can be successful doing your own thing or doing something different. And our children, by the time they're 25, they'll probably be doing jobs that we didn't even know exist. Yeah. You know, yeah. I look back at some of my old jobs. I was a NatWest um, a cashier. I go into NatWest now and there's hardly any cashier yeah. tills there. There's hardly yeah. any money. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I, mean? um, I was in, worked in Iceland for a little while. I was a paper, rat, a paper boy. And you just think, actually, those jobs probably aren't going to, either yeah. they don't exist now or they're not going to exist in yeah. 10 years. You know? And um, I guess, you know, as, as, as dads, as fathers, like, we have to give our children um, the self-esteem, the confidence, the, the, the environment um, to, to, to do well. Um, well, for me personally, to, to, I want my daughter to do well, but, but what she does is up to her. Um, I guess expectations, you know, we had a daily debate the other day about expectations, and it was really interesting because I felt like a lot of parents were saying they don't have any expectations. Okay. Well, I thought, really, is that true? Like, do we have no expectations at all, or are we either scared to say? Does it sound cool, yeah. cool <laughs> not to say? Or is, are we scared to say, or maybe we haven't thought through? And then there was one particular person I was going back and forth with, and he was saying he has no expectations. And then ultimately he said, no, he expects his child to do well at school. So I was like, oh, so you do have an expectation. An expectation yeah. um, you know, do you expect your child to home, own their own home? Do you expect them to get married? Um, not, so not to put pressure on them that they have to do it, but do you have expectations like, that, you, that, you, that you would want your children to do at some point in their, in their lives? Yeah. I don't know. What, what, yeah, I, I think definitely. Um, and it's interesting, I mean, growing up culturally, you know, it was about kind of working hard. But again, like you said, coming from a place where well, my parents had expectations of me to obviously do well, but I don't necessarily think the, as, as a, they were all equipped with all of the tools necessarily to like know how to facilitate that, you know, as, as much. Whereas now with those, I feel like, again, this generation, we seem to be a bit more creative. We've had the experiences. We kind of see both sides of the coin. We're sort of in between what you call maybe the millennials and the, the baby boomers. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like, yeah, we definitely have expectations. We, we, both my wife and I, being teachers, do want our kids to work hard. We do expect them to work hard. And I think there was a, there was a, there was a turn, a transition when it was like, okay, because my boy, when he was just, it, it felt like he was on the cusp of sort of, he's got a really sharp mind, really quick. You can tell that he's definitely, you know, he, 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 he he's got a lot of potential, but then, there were times when it was like, okay, are we letting him get away with a little bit more than his sister because he's a boy? And, and then it was like, we, we stopped, I mean, my wife most certainly was like, nope, you know, she got, she got the regime going, both of you, 10 minutes a day or whatever, or in the morning, you're going to try a bit of this, do a bit of that, we're going to address that issue you have with maths there or English or whatever. And we have seen how it started to make a difference. And over time, even though they were a little bit resistant at first when it was like, oh, like my daughter was really just a bit afraid of maths at first. And then we spoke to the teacher and the teacher, we said, you know, just trying to maybe to make her feel more comfortable. And the teacher did some fantastic work with her to really build her confidence. And now, even though it was really difficult and really challenging to deal with the tears and the crying and the, 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 just the, the issues of not wanting to do it, now she's in a really great place with it. So sometimes I feel like um, what, what I'm learning is that actually there are times when, you know, maybe pressure can be a bad thing, but then there are times when just that resilience and keeping on them and having those expectations that actually no, you will get better at this whether it be the the whole growth mindset way of thinking you you do see the benefits of your labor down the line and you start thinking actually expectations can be a great thing 
if they are, I think if they're managed well and if we are willing to put in the work to support mm. them. Yeah. I think that's the key thing. Isn't yeah, it? that's, that's yeah. key. It's yeah. about how you manage expectations because as an individual, as a teacher, as a parent, I obviously want high expectations for, for you know, all that are around me. Mm. I want to be saying, we, we want to try and do the, do the best we can. Like in my classroom, like I've kind of got like a couple mantras that all teachers do. And I always say to the kids, I want you to kind of reflect on what you do. And it's like, before you submit your work to me, you need to answer the question. And you go walk to my class and they're all <laughs> say that, what, what do we need to ask ourselves? Is this my best work? Okay. I want my kids to reflect on if I don't think I'm happy with it. And sometimes kids will be really honest because they are honest at that age. And I've come around to them and be like, I don't think it's my best work. <laughs> and I'll be like, are you sure? I like, would we'll stick it together. I'm like, okay. Like, it's like, no, it's not my best work. <laughs> I'm like, I love that. Okay. And I feel I've kind of, I've got a situation where I've given them the ownership of, yes. you know, I have a high expectation for myself. It's not me coming and saying like, that's not your best work and like yelling at them. That's not gonna get me anywhere. So it's about having that high expectation. But then furthermore, like you said, just having a, a measured expectation. And we have to consider the context we're living in the world right now. You know, there's, there have always been mental health illnesses, but it's only in the world we're living in now that it's coming to the fore where we're putting labels on them. You know, people were depressed, people had anxiety, people had stress. But we didn't put the labels on them. Mm. So now people are more aware and they're like, oh, that way that I'm feeling, that was a panic attack. You know, that dark cloud that I had over me, oh, that was a normal life. I was depressed, you know. And we're putting those labels on and rightly so. So people understand you don't have to feel that way. But because we have that and that wider conversation happening, we need to think, okay, well, what's happening if we're heading to a room? You have to do well at this. And if you don't, it's the end of the world. They're going to put so much anxiety on them. For, for many children that I've taught since I've become a teacher, one of the things that has hindered their progress has not been anything academic, it's not been any kind of learning difficulties, it's been anxieties from the pressures that parents, teachers, and wider society have put on them. And I find particularly a certain kind of child who knows they're smart. If you, and I find it especially with girls as well. Smart girls who, who know that they are smart, when they don't get something right, they just crumble because they feel I haven't fulfilled the role that I'm supposed to be in. And it sounds like you, you know, Kyle, Kyle, you've seen this in, in your door as well. You know, so with maths, it's like I'm scared because maths is right and wrong. If you don't get it right, you didn't get it right. You know, that, and that's just the reality of it. In English, you know, you can kind of blag your way around. Like, well, you know, like I was looking at it like in this way. And, but with maths, you know, with, with science, it's right, it's wrong. And I've seen a lot of girls, really bright girls, like lovely students, who when they don't get something right, when they aren't experiencing that success that they're so used to, it just causes a layer of anxiety to, to develop over them. And I think we need to just be more aware as, as parents, mm -hmm. as, as white society of, yeah, we wanna have those expectations, but, but what do we do with it and how measured is it? I remember maybe about a month or so ago, there's a quote from one of the education ministers talking about, in this very same conversation, of how much pressure we're putting on people. And very blasé was just like, well, you know, I think it's fine that, you know, we should be putting pressure on kids because in life we have that kind of pressure. Now, for one, what's his background? What, what pressure did he have? Because I've got kids who, year six, if they're doing their sets, they've at the same time got like big man stress on them. You know, they could be a carer at home. They could be the man of the house. And we're talking at, at 11 years old. So can we really say, well, there should be pressure? Because I think they've probably got enough pressure as it is beyond having to think, if I don't do well in my sets, what's going to go down? So we just need to, like, to, to manage it. And we need to make sure that we, we kind of make sure we, we balance it out with, with the wider pressures and the awareness that we should now have, really, of, of what could be happening with with our, our well-being and our mental health mm. yeah, yeah. Okay. now that great points man i think it's really good to hear it from a, from a teacher's perspective and understand like the broader what challenges because i guess we can look at things for our own family and in our very insular worlds but i guess you've got that perspective which is which is really good i think the mental health thing is so interesting you know i was at uni and there are, when, when i talked to my friend jermaine now we look back and there's like people that were definitely depressed but at the time, I don't think I ever used the expression mm. depression. I, was, depression yeah. I don't think I ever used that word 
at university, like once. But when you look back at it, you're just like, actually, yeah, yeah. I, I can, I can see it now, the, the behavior. Yeah. Um, and, and it is so true that, that I think nowadays there are, there's a heightened awareness of, of the world we live in. You know, I remember when I got my GCSE results, I didn't really know or care what anyone else got apart from my circle of friends. Yeah. Whereas now you go on Facebook and everyone's posting their there, yeah. results and stuff like that. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, I got, I got B's or whatever. You might have done well for you. But then you go on your Facebook yeah. feed and someone's got A's. And you're thinking, yeah. you're comparing yourself with people who, yeah. who have a completely different life and different people. You know, there's no need to compare with, with other people. And I think that is definitely something that we, that we need to bear in mind. So I guess like, what was your, what was what our final words around this? Like, what would you say for, you know what? For, for around expectations yeah, and pressure um, and stuff. I think, yeah, I think expectations are definitely important. It's, it's intrinsic, it's part of us, isn't it? We all have ideals, expectations, based on our ideology and our personal experience or whatever and who we are. And I, I think whilst it's important to, um, to have expectations for our children, I think, it's about, I think it's about helping them to be well-rounded human beings. So dealing with the mindset um, as opposed to a topic or a subject, I think if you deal with the mindset, then they can transfer that to whatever they, they do. Um, and I think it's about you know, providing the, the space and the time and the support. So one of the things we're doing now is looking at flexi schooling, which is, you know, they spend some part of the week at school, part of the week with us, with us at home. And not because the school, I mean, school's doing a great job, we, we, we're happy, but it's about us. We feel like as parents, there's lots more we can do. And we want to use more time to do that rather than just a weekend. So that's something we're exploring. So again, it's also about creating the time for us to facilitate that support. Cool. Yeah. Ayla, final words. Yeah, for me, it's, it's all about balance. Mm -hmm. It's all about balance and, and recognizing the context of the expectations. We all have expectations, you know. I expect my son to be polite. I expect him to do the right thing. That's a basic expectation, but it's an expectation nonetheless. Mm -hmm. You know, when he goes to school, I want him to do well. But then where the balance comes in is I want him to do well for himself. I want him to do well because I see the value of education, not the qualification, but actual getting educated and being educated. You know, that's why, that's what my expectation is. So for me, it's all about the balance. And it's also recognizing that when we, when we have those expectations, we're still talking about young people, still talking about children. And we need to make sure that we give them the tools and give them the support where we aren't putting an expectation that is not age appropriate, so to speak, where we're basically allowing them to crumble or having to deal with like a, a level of pressure that just really isn't right for someone of that age. Mm. Well, you two done a great job summarizing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to leave it there. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Uh, musicfootballfatherhood.com, hashtag Daddy Debates. Get involved in the conversation on Twitter uh, and follow us. Thanks, man. It's been a really good conversation. Peace. <laughs>